We gather this morning on Good Friday to continue the worship of the great three days, having begun last evening on Monday, Thursday. And our worship will conclude with the festive celebration of Easter morning. For this service, the sacramental elements and vessels, linens, pyramids, banners and books have been removed from the front of our worship space. Once again, we thank Kai Leinen and Kai Renta for their special music this morning, for Darlene Taylor for being the organist, and for John Statlander for being the AV tech, as well as being one of our readers. Let us continue to prepare for this special worship, listening to Were You There, played by Kai and Kaya. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let's listen to the traditional readings for Good Friday. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapters 52 and 53. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall start at many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, 
We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered, <coughs> excuse me, numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressor, transgressors. The word of the Lord. The next hymn is, Alas! And did my Savior bleed?
Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing what all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these others go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those who he gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Judean police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Judeans that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Judeans come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But I have, if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Judeans replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not Jewish, am I? 
your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Judeans. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Judeans again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. And Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Judeans answered him, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Judeans cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was a day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Judeans, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. And he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. <clears throat> there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, 
one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mo mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Judeans did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath. Especially because the Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with them. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Judeans, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The Gospel of our Lord. Each year on Good Friday, when our congregation gathers for worship, we read the Passion of our Lord according to John in parts. And this enables us to get into the heart of the sacred story, making it come alive once more as we move from scene to dramatic scene. However, it also puts the words of the crowds, here called the Judeans, into our own mouths. This can be quite unsettling, for we then become the ones who insist that Pilate and Roman law judge Jesus, instead of keeping his prosecution an internal religious affair. Pilate has to order Jesus killed, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. This is a crime not only against God, but against the emperor. We are the ones who reject clemency for Jesus, 
demanding instead that Barabbas be set free. And finally, we are the ones who cry out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. We are the ones. And I wrote last year that so perhaps it is that even with some relief that this Good Friday we can't come together. And so it is perhaps in 2021. For reading these words in our own homes rather than shouting them aloud is easier on the soul. We are able to stand back, as it were, from the action. It is possible to lift ourselves out of the crowds who push Pilate to condemn Jesus. With some relief, once again, we are able to escape denying with Peter that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus' death remains someone else's problem. Someone else's decision. Someone else's guilt. For a second year in a row. And as we knew last year, and as we know again this year, even without our voices, it still happens. Pilate hands over Jesus to be crucified. Carrying his own cross, our Savior goes to the place of the skull. He is nailed to that cross, a most hideous form of execution, with the charge also nailed there, the King of the Jews. And even as our voices remain silent, Jesus says, It is is finished. Then he bows his head and gives up his spirit. Once more, the forces and fears of the world have triumphed over God's voice of truth, love, and community. It is over. The silence can be deafening. Yet Jesus didn't die because of the voice of the crowds. He didn't die because of the collective weight of the people's sins gathered that day. He died because the peoples of the world desired not to hear his message. His teaching of a God who loved the world so much that God came down took human form and walked among them. He died because the people of the world focused so much on listening to themselves, on following their own desires, that they rejected the one who shared visions of peace, justice, grace, and reconciliation. He died almost alone, as those he called sons and daughters of the Creator mostly abandoned him. So in the end, the voices of the crowd were silent, just as they were last year and just as they are this year. Jesus, the King of the Jews, our King, was dead. Yet this Friday remains good. In the midst of that silence, there is hope of life. For God's love for humankind did not die on the cross. The voices and actions of humanity did not have the final word. Even as he is hanging, dying, Jesus shares compassion and love for his mother and the other women standing at the foot of the cross. He tells the disciple whom he loves to look after them as if they were his own family. 
And we hear that from that hour, he took Jesus' mother into his home. Into his home means much more than simple hospitality. It implies making them one with each other. Making her needs part of his own. And sharing of himself for her well-being. In this way, this disciple is to model the example of service that Jesus gave as he washed the disciples' feet. He is to love as he has been loved. He is to give of himself so that God's vision of community is continued. Even with Jesus no longer in their midst, he is able to make God's presence known and felt. Led by the Spirit, he is to offer compassion, healing, and strength. So that God's love is known among them and through them. So this morning, for a second year, we remain silent. Yet God remains active. God's voice of grace and truth cannot be silenced. This broken world does not have the final word. We hear once more from the cross the word of love and the word to love as we have been loved. We receive once more the vision of life, life for all people. We wait to lift our voices and to join in the joy that is coming after the tomb. And then we will be silent no more. Let us sing, listen to the hymn of the day beneath the cross of Jesus. you in the silence after each bid to make your own prayer. 
And as you are able, and if you have people in your household or that you can connect with other people, to please use the text and the email or on our website and you can share in the whole traditional prayer as it is printed there. And I will offer the bids and have a brief moment of silence for you to offer your own prayer and then continue on to the end and we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Let us pray for Susan and Jason, our bishops, for all pastors, for all deacons, including Michelle, and for all servants of the Church, and for all the people of God. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Let us pray for God's creation. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Let us pray for those in need. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Behold the life-giving cross, on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us a blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection, for by your cross, joy has come into the world. We do adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world.